So what's going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here, and today I want to talk a little bit about Super Heavy Samurai in the North American World Championship Qualifiers. Um, so basically Nats, and this is the big pie chart for Top 64 that we're looking at here. Uh, Cash Tira taking the most slots, the deck is toxic, right? Uh, Branded surprisingly doing well, Pearly surprisingly doing well after people said the hits would kill the deck. It's still showing up strong. I mean, um, I, I do think the hit was too early, but you know, at the same time, it's nice to see Pearly uh, make this happen. Dragon Link with the Bist deals and uh, you know a bunch of other, and the fact that Dragon Link has never really fallen off. It's it's only like come in and out of relevance, but it's never really been a bad deck to play. Rickison Avalon, you know, sort of like. It's sort of one of those decks that not enough people talk about, and I wish I had more time to talk about this deck and what it does. But the reason why it's so successful is because it's not just a one-player combo deck. Like, most combo decks only interact with themselves and their own cards. But, like, Rika Sun Avalon, as you're building your board, you're interacting with the opponent. You're tributing their monsters to resolve your effects. In the same way that Runic has to banish... Um, cards from the top of your deck or a Shizu had to mill the top of the opponent's deck. Rika can tribute monsters on the opponent's field to fulfill the cost of its own effects when it's, you know, you know, comboing off and creating its um, end board, meaning that it not only can create a board of multiple negates and interactions, but can also break a board down while doing that. So, really great deck. Um, Sprite, now, this this pie chart may actually be a little misrepresenting because, it, you know, from looking at it, you see, like, Branded would be the second best deck, but in reality, Sprite was the second best deck, right? Because like, you have Runic Fur Hire Sprite. You have Runic Twin Sprite. You have uh, Adventure Malfi Sprite. You have Sky Striker Sprite. You have Runic, just regular Runic Sprite. And you have Gishki Sprite. Like one, two, three, four, uh, seven, eleven. That is eleven slots in top sixty-four dedicated to a to some sort of sprite variant. Meaning, sprite is technically the second second most represented um, archetype in this uh, pie chart, and um, it's kind of going. I, I can't say it's going un unchecked because Castira is right here. And Sprite has been around for long enough that like most people know how to deal with it. But the the Runic mixes with decks, uh, like, and it's usually like it's always with Runic. Like, there's only like two of these that do not play Runic in some way. The rest of these, like the Runic Sprite, uh, I guess Adventure Malfi Sprite as well doesn't. So out of the eleven decks, only three of them don't use Runic. Eight of the decks in top sixty four are a runic sprite version some sort of runic sprite well i guess runic twin sprite yeah yeah R runic twin sprite yeah um and so we go over here to see this one copy of super heavy samurai right that's what i wanted to get into super heavy samurai and the north american wcq um and this is actually a misrepresentation of what actually happened. What actually happened was people were playing Manadium with a Super Heavy Samurai engine splashed in. And, you know, I guess it got lost in translation. Like some some par somebody probably saw Wakashi and Big Benke and Bike on someone's list. And they were like, wait, this is Super Heavy Samurai. We're back. But in reality, it's just Manadium with Super Heavy Samurai splashed in. I think once we got rid of Scarecrow in the TCG, Manadium became the best Synchro deck. And I think that kind of still is... I, I think that holds true because, like, other than Punk Gold Pride... Actually, yeah, because if you turn the Super Heavy Samurai into Super Heavy Samurai Manadium, that means Manadium has three uh, slots in top 64, meaning it, it is more represented than Punk Gold Pride. And to see how this broke down even further, uh, we have how the decks did from top 64 all the way to top 2, which the top 2, actually the top 4 was entirely Kashtira. Uh The top 8, you know, Dragon Link, Purely, 
and Castiera. So after top 16, Sprite completely fell off. Uh, and I guess my you know math was wrong. It was actually 12 lists that were on Sprite, not not 11. Um, Rickerson Avalon made it all the way to top 16, and then Manadium made it to top 32. And the reason why this is significant is because the list that we're looking at today is actually a Manadium Super Heavy Samurai mix that I, you know, wanted to sink my teeth into and really absorb. Um, just elephant in the room, it's playing Puppet Lock. Still, without Scarecrow in Super Heavy Samurai, I think, you know, it's a, it's, I, I, I don't want to say brave, but I think it's really creative that they're still finding routes into this Albion card thanks to Muddy Mud Dragon and the, you know, abundance of a Synchro engine to make, uh, you know, a level 6 Synchro fairly quickly and without using much resources. So, um, yeah, there, there, there was no pure... Um, Super Heavy Samurai deck that made it into top 64, but there was one that bubbled and made it to 70th place. Basically a few shots, a few slots short of top 64, and we're also going to be covering that list um, on the channel as well. I think that should be the next video. So, yes, Manadium is, I think without a doubt, the best synchro deck in the TCG right now. Um, and it will only become stronger once Duelist Nexus releases Revolution Synchron, the new Visa Synchro, that, uh, what the fuck does it do? So, discard Synchro Summon, you get add a spell trap that mentions Visa. So, basically, you get to add any of the Visa's uh, field spells or, um, anything that, like, like some of the Tier Element cards that, like, negate or... Like, anything that is within any of the engines of the Visus lore, you can add a spell or trap from that engine to your hand. You can even add the Manadium. Um, counter trap, which, as long as you control a Synchro Monster, it is a counter trap Omni Negate with very little cost. <laughs> so, or no cost at all, actually. And it negates activation as well, and destroys the card, so that's really significant. But I think now we should get into the list of what was actually being played. And another thing to say is that you're going to see Patrick Hoban here saying that this is his deck list, and he did end up making it into top 64. I don't know his exact placement, but I, I believe the reason why we're seeing the list by Daniel Ramirez Medina first is because he is one of the two Manadium players that made it to top 32, and he just decided to share his list first. Maybe Patrick Hoban is waiting. Maybe someone has, like, the exclusive scoop with Patrick Hoban. I tried to find his list. Nothing came up, so the fact that nothing came up tells me, okay, maybe he didn't share it yet, so I'm just going to wait. But this is a really interesting list, and the fact that he sort of agrees with what this list has going on and saying he was pretty much running the same deck means that there's probably a lot of sauce put into this deck. I think Visa's Random Bullshit Go is really good in theory, as long as you're not leaning too much on the Manadium side of, side of things, because the Manadiums themselves have a conflicting engine. But when you're mixing in all the Visa stuff, you don't have to rely too hard on this engine, and so it doesn't end up conflicting as much. So, to start off with the Super Heavies, we have 10 Super Heavy cards. Um, Soul Guy Booster, Scales, Soul, uh, Soul Piercer, Triple Wakashi, Triple Bike, 1 Big Benkei. Uh, a few notes. One, um, it's really interesting that like he's playing Scales without any Soul Peacemaker. So, like... He's just hard pendulum summoning scales once he set up his pendulum scale. Because I don't see any other way that you're making scales in this list. And also, uh, Soul Piercer, it might be a brick if unless you open it with like Visus or maybe even with Fenrir. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Um, 
but like by itself, I it, it doesn't do anything. So I'm uh, I'm kind of surprised that he's playing the piercer, but I'm not too sure what exactly he's cooking what, or what's the route with piercer, and also one big banke, um, it's great to minimize the engine to minimize bricks. But it also means that if you open the big Benkei, Wakashi is no longer a starter because you can't special summon it from scale. So now it just... It's, it's not even like you can't play the Super Heavy Samurai side of things, but it's just it's just weird from that point on because now it's just you just activate a pendulum scale. You, you use two cards in your hand and hopefully the other three can, you know, uh, make up for the fact that these guys aren't really doing shit by themselves now. Like, because for Big Benkei to search a Super Heavy Samurai monster, you need to control one, but then that means you'd have to normal summon the Wakashi. And maybe, maybe it could be argued that there aren't enough normal summons in this deck to for, for that to really matter, but I don't think that's the case. You have Right Heart, you have Meek, you have Room Heart, and yeah, that's about it. That that sounds like four potential cards that can be normal summon. Uh, ten slots total. Ten slots for potential normal summon. So I don't think that playing being only on one big Benkei to make Wakashi live is the best idea. But um, I can also see why they would do this. Like for efficiency sake, you you want to see big big Benkei in the least number of hands mathematically possible you play one copy you risk losing wakashi as a starter sometimes when you only play one but i think the chances of you opening it in your hand also decrease so at this so it, it may kind of just balance out from there so uh moving on we got one regulus reichardt double visa star frost triple meek and if you don't know what meek does uh, if you control a Visa so or a monster with 1500 attack to and defense, special on this card from hand, uh, this card is shown by Battle by Card Effect. You could summon another Meek from your deck, then increase its level by two, um, which is a really great way for making level eights um, because this plus Room Heart equals Excel Synchro. So that's a good way to start your turn as well. Uh, room Heart, uh, it can pop a. Manadium monster you control? Yeah. And the, that's a quick effect. You can pop a Manadium monster or a monster with 1500 attack, 21 defense. Destroy if you do special summon this card. This card summoned. You had a Manadium card from deck to hand, which means you could add the counter trap. But because we're on a super heavy engine, we're only playing the most the most important um, spells and traps in the Visus lore, you know, possible. And... You know, that's why we have Rykart here to search um, Scareclaw. Is it Arrival? Is, is that its name? Yeah, to search Scareclaw, uh, uh, Arrival, and um, we have Roomheart to search our Manadium spell here, which I'm not too sure what it does. I believe it searches Field Spell. Uh, yeah, target one monster you, you control to destroy if you do place one peaceful or add a peaceful planet Calarium from deck to hand. Or if you already control the peaceful planet, then you can add a Manadium spell trap instead. But this would only be to add the field spell and then you could banish it from grave. Hold on, let me cook. You could banish it from grave. Especially I'm going to visa Star Frost or a monster of 1500 from your hand. Oh, okay. So we can add field spell and then it could summon out the Visus without you having to neg on a monster, meaning like Visus can just come out instantly and it plus Room Heart could equal Baron. That's that's actually really interesting. Uh so we're on nine ha nine hand traps here. This seems like a really heavy combo list. And um you know, like nine slots for hand traps in a combo deck seems like really good. Because there are some combo decks that cannot even afford three spaces. So that's that's really interesting. 
Uh, one scare cla uh, scare cache. Uh, you could search it off Fenrir. You could search it off Planet if you already opened the Reich Heart and you already opened Visas. So I think it's a good tech card. Um, oh, and you could banish Light Heart to summon it. Like after you use your Light Heart to make like Cross Sheep or whatever to loop the Visa Starfrost a few times. And the, you know, uh, 1500 attack monsters a few times, then I think it's it's definitely a really interesting choice. One Nightmare for the Lock, or the FDK as some people like to call it. Triple Fenrir for um, both it being a great utility card. Um, like, it being a, a almost toolbox card in the deck for searching Scare Clash. And also being able to... Um, I, I guess there's no other cash tier you could search, so it's not really a toolbox card. It's just a great, um, I can't even say starter, because I, I keep l looking, expecting to see Rise Heart somewhere in this list, and I, I'm just not seeing it, so I'm, I'm a little flabbergasted. But because it's a Visa stack, like, you can kind of just do whatever, um, and it'll still work. Um, it, it may work better than even playing um regular rise heart in the list so it's not even in the side like rise heart isn't even in the side or anything so that's kind of crazy uh double peaceful planet calarium um and so what this does it adds a manadium or visus from deck to hand and light monsters you control gain 100 attack for each tuner you control in your graveyard and if you face a tuner you control destroy a battle by card effects you can revive the monster that 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 was destroyed so that's really interesting uh then we have right self we're not playing Shangri Era, so that means we're only resolving this card to search a Cash Era, most likely Fenrir, but sometimes even Scare Cash. Um, Reich Phobia to is a really easy search off of um, Lightheart, and usually you're always grabbing Visas off this card. I've I've never seen someone grab. Uh, Rykart off this, unless Rykart just, unless you don't already, uh, unless you already don't have the Visas, but most times you're searching uh, Visas off this card. Like this, this is this is the card to get Visas off of. The, these other ones are kind of like they have like Fenrir or Meek or Ruimheart are pretty good, but this one you're usually is usually the one that you save to search Visas. And Arrival can revive Visas or your Reichheart from Grave, so that's why it's a, it's a great tech card. It's also searchable. Like, all these... And it's like, it's crazy that they can play all these field spells with no Planet Pathfinder like Kashira, like certain Kashira builds do, or no Terraforming, simply because they're on Super Heavy. They're only on their most essential spell cards, and nothing else. So extra deck, we have Lightheart. We have Proxy F Magician. Which can fusion summon using monsters on our field in hand. And it's just like, it's summoning requirement is just like two effect monsters. It's actually a really great card. Um, I was thinking about it for like X Dox Hydra. But like, I can, I can see why a card like this could do well in Visus because you can turn uh, Visus and something else in field or hand. Like, if you don't have a Synchro to go into, you can go into something like um, Albion or Sanctifier Dragon, possibly. Honestly, I'm not too sure. Like, like what can you go into here that you can't already go into anyways with Muddy Mud Dragon? Because you're going to need Mud Dragon for all three of these because you're not playing any of the proper material for them. You're not playing Albaz and you're not playing Cartesia. So I'm a little curious, like, what is the point of the Proxy F Magician? Because you can already make Vicious a Stroud just by banishing your monsters. It sure is an, inter an interesting question. Um, so, yeah. I mean, shit. So Cross Sheep, for when you make your a Stroud, you get to re revive a monster. Mary make it Sargus, because we are still playing Regulus, and it's... Possibly the best rank four, rank eight combo in the game. Like it's a, it's a double Zeus, or it's a or it's a four material Zeus. It's not double Zeus. It's a four material Zeus, on top of being a searcher. On top of being well, I guess you wouldn't be able to use its um, 
on field effect for detaching its its trigger effect, but it's still a great, really great card. Like there's so this card o opens up so much for a lot of decks that like it's not surprising to see it here. Zeus, Excel, Synchro, Baron, Dispatter, Mud Dragon, Golden Cloud Beast, Malong most likely here because of Grand Guignol, and Grand Guignol is here to mill light or dark monsters from your deck, which. If it's not Visus, it's most likely going to be Malong. Those are really the only two targets I see that are like worth milling. So, yeah. Um, then there's Albion the Sanctifier Dragon, which I think is interesting. That like Puppet Lock actually works in this deck, and they're not even. Oh, Grand Guggenhall drop Puppet. That's that that that's the that's its main purpose. So if you already have Puppet, you drop Malong, but if you don't but if you don't have um, Puppet, then you mill Puppet. That's what it's used for. Okay. I was like I, I, I got up to Albion and I'm like, wait, hold on, this is still a puppet lock deck. Like there's so much going on here. I almost forgot Puppet Lock was even allowed to be in here, but there it is. No gimmick puppet link, even though it's really easy using the super heavy engine. Um it's just straight monsters. So that's that's cool. And I guess, like, this Albion, uh, the Branded Dragon, kind of explains a Proxy F Magician, because if you can make Proxy F on top of a Muddy Mud Dragon, you use Proxy F Effect to fuse Mud Dragon plus anything else. I believe Proxy F can use cards in hand. No, it only uses monsters on your field. So I'm a, I'm a little perplexed as to, like... Because Muddy Mud Dragon can already do that. Muddy Mud Dragon can already tribute monsters to Fusion Summon. Yeah, during your main phase, if you control. Oh, this Synchro Summon card. Okay. So you make Proxy F. So it's like if this gets revived by Bestial Dispatter or something of that nature, you can make Proxy F and still use it for fusions. I think that's that's what it is. It's proxy F here is more for follow up, uh, turn two, turn three, rather than the main line, which I think is a great idea. And lastly, we have vicious uh, Stroud, um, because it's uh, it's a core part of the deck. And looking at the side, we have Bistials, Curry Caras, Sage de Fleur. Um, this is. I really love the way this card's gaining popularity because it really deals with a lot in the game and it's great to see it it, it get its, you know, just desserts. Um, a little surprised to see the Spider Orchid because not everyone is on this card and it's like it doesn't do enough sometimes, but it is a great way for Super Heavy to deal with like multiple floodgates or face up um, spell and trap interruptions on, on the field and... It is still a little surprising that they're on Sage package, but no, no Archmean eccentrics. But that can probably be explained by the fact that Sage can pop Meek, and then Meek can summon another copy of itself, and then, you know, you can keep uh, extending from there. So Pankotrops, which I do believe, like. It's really interesting, like, I believe Pankotrops is only here as, again, a spell and trap interruption, or floodgate interruption. It's not really here to be a, a body, like, it could be those things, but its purpose here is to play a sort of versatile role, where it can either attack over a 24 or 100 attack, like Apo or something, or it can tribute itself, pop some back row, pop a problematic card on field. A Rise Heart is, pro is most likely for... Um, cast your mirror matches um we can't play triple tactics in our deck because we're on super heavy but we can tr max out on finrear and after getting a search or something we can go for a rise heart and threaten our own you know banish three if our opponent doesn't get rid of it immediately all right i said banish three and threaten our own banish guy cowboy i'm a little surprised that i'd like, Cowboy has always been a card that just goes for game uh, main phase two, so I'm a little perplexed as to what its exact purpose here is. Maybe maybe it's just here for time. And this card 
Is this Scare Scareclaw Twin Saw, where you can tribute a Scareclaw monster? It's sort of like an Icarus attack for Scareclaw, except um, if you control Visas, the monsters your opponent, the cards your that you destroy get banished instead of um, sent to grave. Uh, if Link 3 or higher monsters on the field, you can banish this card from your graveyard right for the rest of the turn. The interplay can activate the effects of Link monsters on the field. That also seems nice, and it's searchable from Reichhardt. So, it's like a searchable out to maybe like a deck like Live Twin Sprite. Like decks that are really focused on Link summoning entirely, like Co-Talker. So, it's a good searchable out to decks like those. And yeah, um, that's that's the list. And people were memeing on Patrick Hoban this event for um, being on stream and losing to a dark hole. Like I think he lost his two rounds in the feature match very quickly. And the, I'm I'm kind of surprised that like something like this could work this format because. My mentality after seeing the ban list, I was like, wait, if you can't beat board breakers, and, you know, the best board breaker being Dark Ruler no more, like one of the best. So if you can't play past around, like if you can't play around a Dark Ruler no more, why even play the deck? And I guess like that's why I um, hovered more towards the Deng Long side of things, which will be the next deck profile that we show. But it's nice to see other builds also still still get a chance to compete and actually do well, um, considering the fact that Nats had just just under three thousand players. Um, the fact that Manadium or even a super heavy samurai engine in a build got top thirty two, you know, I, I it, it gives me hope. It gives me hope. I know Duelist Nexus is, is about to flip the game on his head, but uh, it was nice to see a super heavy. Um, back on the, you know, big stage for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know in the comment section below. I know I didn't do this deck profile in Dueling Book. I probably should have, but I wanted to make it quick. And you guys let me know what you guys think about Manadium and its future in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, but until next time... Signing out. Peace.